Morning Saints of the Most High. I'm Rod Thomas coming to you from the DFW on a rather, well, overcast with the promise or the threat of rain showers today on this first day of the week. And um, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to fellowship with me on this rather, let's say, it's a special posting. Um, and it is always, again, my hope, trust, and prayer that this installment of the Messianic Torah Observer finds you, your families, and fellowships well and blessed. You may notice that my voice is kind of craggly and kind of off today. I seem to have come down with a fall cold or maybe a flu. I don't know. I rarely get sick these days. I take a lot of vitamins and I take care of myself, but for some bizarre reason, I've come down with a bug and some scum in my nasal passages and all. So please forgive me, but I do want to get this post out because as I'm posting these thoughts and reflections, it is Sunday, November 3rd, 2024, uh, this being the case, we are just two days away from the 2024 presidential elections. It's a big, big deal here in this nation. What I believe to be at stake in this election is the very soul of these United States of America. What do I mean by the very soul of these United States is at stake in this election? Simply this, the American people have laid out before them a choice between complete and utter darkness, entering into a season of complete and utter darkness, and the potential for truth and light reigning over this nation. And what do I mean by a season of complete and utter darkness and the potential for entering into a season of truth and light? One political party has made it clear. One of the political parties of the two that are vying for office and for power. Well, one of them, the political parties, the liberal side, let's say, has made it clear that it is not interested in upholding and promoting any biblically moral standards in their quest for supreme power over the citizens of this nation. While the other political party although not perfect in its moral standing, and in some ways they're immoral, but that other side, the conservative side, seeks to at least make some provision in upholding and promoting biblically moral standards in this nation. It would be naive, if not entirely foolish for me, or any other messianic or note sorry, to say that one political party is the paragon of biblical morality in this nation. The fact of the matter is that scripture clearly notes that all of humanity is fatally flawed. Psalm chapter 14 verses 2 and 3 reads, The Lord, Jehovah, looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek Elohim. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Very related to this, very similar to this wording almost to a T, is also Psalm chapter 53, verse 2. Then we have Paul writing to the Roman Messianics, chapter 3, verses 9 through 12, and the KJV reads as follows. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before provided both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. 
there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Despite the reality of these critical, sobering verses of holy writ, of scripture, we must still face an even greater reality, that we who claim to be citizens of the kingdom, note serene, Nazarene Yisraelites, Messianics, must, must, must live in the world while at the same time not be of this world. As recorded in John chapter 17, verses 14 through 16, and Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it is this greater spiritual reality that presents the tumultuous challenge within every true disciple of Yeshua Messiah, knowing that politicians are prone to lie and put their own self-interest ahead of their constituents. And at the end of the day, many, if not most of them, do not have a true relationship with the creator of the universe. So how does a die-in-the-wool disciple of Yeshua rationalize these troublesome realities in terms of whether he or she should take part in the upcoming electoral processes? Several election cycles ago, I had firmly concluded within myself that no true Messianic, no true Notsari, no true Nazarene Yisraelite, knowing the inherent moral problems associated with all politicians, could with any level of righteous conscience take part in an electoral process. To me, it was for one believer to do so, to participate in the electoral process, to vote, let's just say simply, to do so would defy Jehovah and his purpose, his plans, his will. At the heart of my hard and fast conviction on this issue were the words of the Apostle Paul, who wrote to the Roman Assembly of Messianic Believers the following. Chapter 13, verses 1 through 4, and the KJV reads, Let every soul subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Verse 2, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinances of God. Do you see the conviction I arrived at with this, this passage? Continuing, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. And verse 4, For he is the minister of God to these, for thee, or to thee, for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Again, that was Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. Another proof passage for my conviction was found in Daniel chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. The KJV reads, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. For me, the irresistible question was, if I were to vote for a particular candidate that Jehovah was not interested in putting into power, or was not intending to put into power, would I be kicking against the pricks, so to speak? Would I be taking a stand ignorantly against the Almighty on this matter? 
Did not the apostle to the Gentiles write to his young protege, protege, I should say, at the time that no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Indeed, all of these, what I once believed to be supported or proof passages for my position against messianics voting for political candidates provide us a glimpse into the sovereignty of our creator over the affairs of man, as well as that Timothy passage encourages the child of the Most High to limit his or limit her involvement in the affairs of this life for the benefit and promotion of the coming kingdom of Yah. But in hindsight, do these passages truly reveal the whole and end of the story? Do these passages truly cast a dim view of Note Sarim of messianics taking part in this nation's electoral processes? We who have been in this faith for any length of time and who possess at least a basic knowledge of the Bible know that Scripture must agree with Scripture. In other words, Scripture must not only interpret itself, it must also be complete in complete harmony with itself. You see, one passage of Scripture cannot disagree with another passage of Scripture, right? If such a situation were to exist, then the whole viability of Scripture would be in question and our faith would be in peril. Praise Yah that this situation does not, nor could it exist. That being said, if Scripture truly leans towards believers not taking part in the electoral process of this nation, as I once believed, how do we then rationalize Yah's people throughout Scripture holding positions of power within and over pagan nations throughout history? Consider these examples. Joseph, son of Jacob, the son of Jacob, ruled as a wazir over Egypt. He was second most powerful man over Egypt, Genesis chapter 41. Then we have Moses, who grew up in Pharaoh's house, Pharaoh's household, before he was exiled from Egypt and led the nation of Israel out of Egypt, Exodus chapter 2. Then we have King David, who ruled over Israel and the pagan nations of the region around Israel in peace for years. 1 Chronicles 23, followed by his son, King Solomon, who ruled again over Israel in peace and over the pagan nations of that region. We have the interesting example of the Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II, who Yah referred to as his servant. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 9, and Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 6. Daniel. Daniel served as an administrator of the Babylonian court. Daniel 6. Mordecai, uncle of Queen Esther, served as second in command to King Ahasuerus in Babylon. Esther chapter 10, verse 3. And of course, we have Queen Esther, who served as queen over the Babylonian empire. In the book of Esther. So Yah has shown in his word that he is not above placing his people in positions of power, even placing his people in positions of power over pagan nations such as Egypt and Babylon. And if Yah has shown that he will place his people in positions of power over pagan nations, who are we to operate in isolation against the electorate? officials of this nation. 
The other issue that is related to the question of believers taking part in this nation's electoral process has to do with turning a blind eye, heart, and mind to sin. As the righteous disciples of Yeshua HaMashiach, we are called to be sin aware. Sin aware, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. If we as righteous disciples of Yeshua are sin aware, we are spiritually and physically aware of the devastating power of sin to humanity, and we have it within our power, granted to some degree, if we have it within our power, I should say, to some degree, seek to mitigate the profligation or prevalence of sin in our midst, does it not stand to reason that we should do so? Does not voting for the right candidate provide that opportunity to mitigate the profligation or prevalence of sin in our midst? It's just a question I'm posing. Beloved, let's be real here. There is no secret in this nation that one of the political parties seeking to install their presidential candidate into office openly and firmly promotes a sin-laden agenda for the American people on their platform. That liberal party supports and promotes anti-Semitism, anti-faith, the LGBTQ agenda, it promotes unrestrained murder of the unborn, abortion, which is nothing less than the national worship of Moloch, anti-Second Amendment, you can't defend yourself against aggressors, a pro-Islamic agenda, anti-First Amendment, agenda, uh, silencing their op opposition, their opponents at all cost, pro-illegal immigration and the culling of the American population. Yes, there is an insidious purpose behind the liberal, the left's insistence on allowing unbridled illegal immigration into this nation promotion of racism, to divide the nation, to create a, an environment that induces evil and sin, promotion of a diversity, equity, inclusion agenda, which is right out of the Marxist playbook, and so forth and so forth. Now, this doesn't mean that the conservative political party seeking to install their candidate into office of the president of the United States is holy and righteous. As we mentioned previously, all humanity, every human is filthy and no one doeth good. But we who are disciples of Yeshua are supposed to be filled with Yah's precious indwelling spirit, which leads us to be sin aware. That being the case, the sin-aware disciple of Yeshua Messiah must be led by Yah's indwelling spirit and conduct themselves in an exceeding righteousness that promotes the kingdom of Elohim. Now, these individuals must seek to promote goodness, peace, justice, mercy, grace, truth, and love for their Elohim, their God, and their fellow man or woman. Thus, it stands to reason that taking part, a note sorry, a messianic taking part in the electoral processes of this nation for promoting and installing into power the political party that best embodies these godly principles becomes the de facto moral responsibility of that Notzerim, that, no, that Netzer, that Nazarene Yisraelite, and the one who calls themselves a child of the Most High, who knowingly stands on the side 
and uh, of and promotes the kingdom of darkness agenda, for whatever reason, cannot be a true Notsari, a true Netzer, a true Messianic, a true Nazarene Yisraelite. They cannot. It's that simple. They are essentially wolves in sheep's clothing and are not true members of the body of Messiah. In fact, it is absolutely doubtful that these deluded individuals even possess Yah's set-apart spirit. I'm sorry that's going to upset some people to hear me say that, but I truly believe that. How can we who are filled with Yah's spirit promote and be on the side of a platform that advocates the murder of children, that promotes the abomination of LGBTQ agenda. Violence promotes violence, promotes sin, promotes evil. For whatever reason, oh, I've heard reasons why it's better to go with the evil side over the other side because they lack love for one another. I've had one brother and tell me that. Well, they don't have love. And Yah says we have to love one another. And that other side lacks that love. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that the liberal side that advocates evil has love for their God and love for one another? They do not. They despise you and me. Don't be fooled. There is no love to be had. It's self-serving love. So again, everyone is filthy. Everyone is dirty. And there is no one person that is good in the eyes of Jehovah. So we have to, unfortunately, I hate to say this, we have to be sin aware and take or promote or lean to the side that is the lesser of the two evils. Sure, maybe the conservative side doesn't have this so-called love they should have, but neither does the other side. Yeshua taught this over in Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 through 20. So every good tree yields good fruit, but a rotten tree yields wicked fruit, verse 18. A good tree is unable to yield wicked fruit, and a rotten tree to yield good fruit. Verse 19, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And verse 20, so then by their fruits you shall know them. Again, that was Matthew chapter 7, verse 17 through 20, the scripture's rendition. The apostle Shaul, Paul, counseled the following to his Corinth Messianic followers. Chapter 5, verse 11 reads, But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone called a brother if he is one who whores, or greedy of gain, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one. The other thing that we must be cognizant of as it relates to note serene Nazarene Israelites, Messianics taking part in the electoral processes of this nation is that we, as Yeshua's emissary, as Yeshua's ambassadors, his disciples, are to be about the business of the kingdom. There is no secret that time is short, and it becomes more and more evident each day that we are likely living in the last days. If we are indeed coming upon the last days, or we're living in the last days, well, our work of promoting the coming Malkut Elohim, the kingdom of Elohim, the kingdom of Yah, is even more critical. So we must have every reasonable opportunity to work while it is still day, knowing that the night is coming when no man or woman can work, as Yeshua stated in John chapter 9, verse 4. 
So if we as Yah's elect decide to support, promote, and through our votes install the presidential candidate that stands on the side of the kingdom of darkness, which we know the kingdom of darkness serves only to stymie, to inhibit the work of the gospel, we may be cutting off our noses to spite our faces. And so it behooves us to act in accordance with the leading of Yaj Ruach HaKodesh and vote for the candidate that will best foster an environment that is conducive to our doing the essential work of the gospel. And so I simply encourage each of us to seek Yah's will for our lives as it relates to the matter of his people taking part in the electoral process of this nation. Indeed, some of us may be led not to vote for either candidate. And of course, many of us will be led to vote for the presidential, senatorial, and congressional candidates that best align with the principles of the Malkut Elohim, the kingdom of Yah, and the work of the gospel. Whichever way the Spirit leads, you do it. Don't just go out and vote because one minister of the faith says you should vote, or don't vote because someone else says you shouldn't involve yourself. You allow the Spirit to lead and guide you unto all understanding and to guide and lead you into all good works. So may Yah's Spirit lead us to do the right thing in this matter, whichever route you're led to take, and may Yah lead us unto all good works, and may Yah have mercy upon this nation. Take care, beloved. Until next time. Shalom, shalom.